Nick Robinson here for Polygon, and today I'm joined by Luke Williams, who is a game designer at Bossa Studios. Hello, Luke. Hello. Uh, and we are going to be taking a look at Worlds Adrift, which is the new open-world, physics-riddled, uh, pseudo-sandbox-slash-survival, but not real. How would you... You could probably describe this game better than I could. What is Worlds Adrift, Luke? It's, uh, it's a sandbox kind of open-world game, uh, sort of set in a land of flying islands and flying airships and uh, across thousands of kilometers and thousands of islands and thousands of players essentially um, and what you'll be doing is you'll be stranded on one of these islands and you build your very own kind of airship and then you take out into the skies um, between all these kind of islands and you basically hunt for technology or players and that kind of stuff and try and you know not lose your ship I guess so now I'm in as a character and I'm joined by Herb who is uh, going to be using his grappling hook, which is your basically your main sort of way of getting around. I can click that there, and I can sort of lower it, and then sort of descend so I don't kill myself um, by sort of slamming into a rock. <laughs> Send onto this island and detach that. So that's like, um, yeah, so it's, a, it's kind of like our main route of traversal. Um, right. You'll see here, Herb's just cutting down cutting a tree. Cutting down a tree. Um, and that'll be the network physics. You'll see that stuff will just kind of collapse. Um, and if I was to basically, that could crush me, like everything kind of has weight in the game. Um, so you can, you, know, you can cut down little branches, because we know, we've, you know we are sort of, it is a, you do have to harvest stuff, but we wanted to make sure that that at least was somewhat interesting. Um, so you're able to just cut up these trees and they will become logs and you can cut those up. And so like harvesting of, you know, trees, if you're not careful, you'll sort of, knock them off the side of an island and that's all kind of lost. This is probably the only game I've seen where like the process of cutting down trees actually there's a there's an element of physical threat to your character while you're doing it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and also so we haven't got the creatures in yet, but that'll be their food source and so they they start getting kind of angry if you start just cutting down their habitat. Hmm. Uh, which is another kind of aspect of the game that lets us kind of simulate an uh, an ecosystem, but that's uh, you know that's been quite a lot to be getting into. And then you have the, I mean, you've got lots of placeholder stuff here. This is like basically pre-alpha. Right. Uh, that's us just kind of you know, like having this little multi-tool. We didn't want you to start this game and then have to like craft an axe and craft a blah, blah, blah and all this. So you kind of can just jump straight in. Um, every character by default has a little, um, their, their grappling hook, which is like our kind of thing that lets you be Spider-Man. So if I kind of like start to cut a tree, I can sort of pull on my rope with it and but obviously trees much heavier than I am. Right. Uh, the way that kind of works is if I just click right mouse, it'll just attach. Now obviously there's no effect of it firing and stuff yet. We don't mm -hmm. have an animation. In but it'll basically just attach to uh, you know, where my cursor is. But if I actually hold down right mouse, the cursor becomes free and I can attach it wherever I want. Um, so then uh, your main route of traversing either island is essentially just jump off, choose a point to hit attach, and then you know, it will use physics and momentum because that's what we do. We're now just doing it in a big multiplayer environment. Um, and you're able to just attach where you want and then sort of... Uh, as you kind of get better at it, you're able to sort of, you know, traverse these islands quite kind of gracefully. Mm -hmm. um, you can see Herb there and I just hit the wall, but that's... <laughs> I was distracted by Herb's graceful beauty as he flew through the skies. And again, we have this kind of... Um, because everything we do, we talk throw physics into it. So, yeah. what we were thinking about, like, okay, how do we make, because, like, Spider-Man does these cool flips and stuff, how do we do that? You know, there's that thing of, like, okay, we can add in animation, but what we decided to do was just, you can just carry momentum from when you let go, so if I kind of, like, swing in and I kind of spin the camera, I'll do, like, a little twirl, and then I can just reattach when I want. That's um, awesome. I mean, it makes uh, it look so much more, like, organic and physical. And yeah, I think, and like, you at Boston Studios, you you have a legacy at this point of being like a very physics game centric studio. Like from Surgeon yeah. Simulator to I Am Bread to now this, like there's a there's a pretty consistent through line of all the games y'all make being driven by uh, realistic or semi realistic physics systems. Yeah, and it's, it's where we want our skill cap to kind of come from. I know, it, you know people have kind of labeled this as an MMO, um, and we and while it is a, a huge online game with like thousands of players and stuff, we don't have like leveling up, there's no skills um, and stuff like that. It's all sort of uh, based on kind of how good you are with the systems in the game. Um, so what we do have when I talked about when you are sort of exploring these islands looking for lost technology and stuff that basically 
uh, makes you more powerful. The way it makes you more powerful is it's, it's new equipment. So right now, the, the grappling hook we have here is, is default, and you can reel in and reel out and stuff. And that's just, you always have that on your character. Um, but you'll notice my character's got a backpack, and that's not something you'd start with. Um, but what that is is basically a hang glider. So, you know, I, if I unlock that ability, I can do this, and at the right time, I can just open the hang glider and sort of now mix that in with my grappling hook. And so I've got more sort of traversal options. Um, we've got some more equipment we kind of show you later on and stuff that sort of shows that. And you can just, yeah, you can mix between the two, um, and it makes sort of navigating, um, you know, it just gives you more options and stuff, and, and you can sort of maybe get the jump on someone or... Sort of. And you mentioned that this is not, strictly speaking, an MMO, and you also made the point that it's not exactly like your typical survival game. Yeah. Because right? like, <laughs> like, I think those game, both of those genres carry these connotations, right, of like, yeah. I never have been able personally to get an MMOs because certain elements of them have felt very much like... There was, there was never that physical, physics-y el like, element that you get from a single-player game, and it felt very much like a chat room at times. And then, like, with survival games, yeah. there are things about your first few hours in every survival game that are kind of boring. Are you... Uh, is your resistance to both of those labels kind of trying to, like, get away from kind of the stigma of, like, what you maybe don't love as much about survival games and MMOs and just taking the parts that you yeah, guys enjoy? Yeah, I mean, so... Because we, we, we have all this kind of rope swing, and it's a lot of fun to do and, and all that kind of stuff, and we didn't want you jumping into the game and having this like countdown of oh your character needs to eat or it needs to drink so we've we've erased all of that so while you are doing like crafting and harvesting and stuff you don't you don't have to gather food mm -hmm. um, and if you die you, you just basically end up back at like a nearby um, one of the, the these islands kind of have I suppose they're like graveyards and you just really you really just want that you lose your inventory um, it kind of uh, sort of falls where you took, sort of died um, you can go back and collect it, or someone can like loot what you had on you. Mm. Um, but actual like equipment stuff you have equipped, you don't actually lose. It's just kind of stuff that's in your bags here, um, and that's what will basically uh, will get dropped. But then you'll just respawn, and there'll be no sort of um, no. any like character deletion or anything like that. And when we talked about sort of finding equipment, uh, like learning how to build sort of new stuff, which kind of enters this list of like you know. Uh, sort of craftable stuff here. Mm -hmm. It's obviously all that UI is entirely placeholder. Uh, it's never going to be like a never, end, a never ending list of stuff. Um, yeah, so you, stuff you've actually learned to be able to craft, you don't lose that. So when you actually learn stuff, you, you maintain it. So if you do die, um, you kind of can shortcut back to where you were, like quite easily. Um, and this will come more into effect when we kind of show you the actual ships. Because the ships are where we kind of have our survival thing. So it might be worth actually if we. Um, jump over to another island that's got a little bit more room. So we wanted um, all of the building to be entirely cooperative and like in-world. So I built a crafting station here. I mean, again, our placeholder is some sort of weird crafting workbench thing. Um, and then, so I have now built a shipyard. And this is where you would basically um, sort of craft your ship. So you can choose a frame here. Um, at the moment, this is... Um, like, we, we just have like a default kind of frame in there, um, but the intention is that the players will basically be able to shape and like craft like the, the shape of the hull itself. So right now we've just got this sort of default shape that we have. Um, and now I'll basically uh, sort of set up this field around. And um, that basically allows you to kind of lift up these physics objects, which is what you'll basically do when you craft stuff. So if I go here, and, and physics still applies in the crafting process, so if I start building, um, an engine. Um, you'll see it kind of start to materialize. Mm -hmm. um, and then it all, that's done now. And then it'll just appear in world and now it's its a physics object. So you can, you know, you can drag it like that. If, you know, if there's two of us kind of behind it, we can both sort of start to you know, try and, so there we go. So he's going to pull it with his rope. So this sort of like editing field that, that you're in, that sort of yeah. suspends the ship in midair temporarily and allows you to strap things to it. Uh, yeah. What are the properties of that? It's, it seems like clearly part of it is that the ship is just free floating and you don't have to worry about physics uh, weighing it yes. down while you're building. So right now it's docked to the shipyard, which is keeping it afloat. Mm -hmm. You will have to um, build these little, little, they're like kind of ship cores. There's a, there's a technology in the world or like a material that allows stuff to float. Um, so you kind of use that um, to basically you, you, you attach one to your ship, I think. Oh, Herb's not actually building. Oh, there's another thing I'll build over here. Um, Oh, I didn't actually put it right, right. 
yeah, so, um, and we kind of play with that sort of technology. So this is what you would build to basically let your ship uh, float. All right, so that'll start crafting. So we've got like a metal plate here. So, so you, as you see, uh, where's the uh, thing? So I can just pick stuff up. Now this only is allowed to happen when you're inside this field, and that's just from when we were sort of designing the system. Um, right. We didn't really want people just being able to like sort of rip parts off your ship as it flew by. Um, so this kind of lets it sort of be in like a controlled sort of area so, where you can't uh, really be exploited, I guess. Now, theoretically, if you ran into like another player in the open world and they just yeah. saw you in this field and wandered in, would they be able to manipulate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the, the the size of the world like means that you're not running into players a huge amount. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the idea is we have completely open systems in the game. So like, her built this chest before and I can just go up to it and open the chest and just like take stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. um, Everything in the game is, is, is kind of freeform and open. So even the placement of stuff. This is a ship core, so if I wanted to, um, I can place it on the top, but this is the thing that's keeping the ship floating. So you generally probably don't want it where it's vulnerable. So what I can do is I can just, if I place it under there, and then, so we were building metal playing here, and I can actually then go, whoop, and that'll curve around the hole there, and that's basically the process of plating up your ship. So anything you want, valuable or anything um, that you really don't want to sort of get destroyed, you'll kind of be putting it uh, essentially underneath the ship and you'll be building these panels and you'll slowly kind of play up the ship. And because it's all physics based, the, all the metals you use will have different like properties and mm -hmm. weights and stuff like that. So you'll be kind of like, I guess, sort of peeing up against like how much weight did you um, sort of, you know, how much weight can your ship hold? what kind of metals you're going to use to defend it, and then they'll have different strength properties. So when it comes to combat, other players will basically be firing at this plating in an attempt to, you know, get rid of it so they can sort of start shooting at your, your important bits and have your ship fall from the sky. Um, and the, I mean, I, something that, that has always like kind of stood out to me that I think is really cool is the way that you're actively physically applying this sheet metal to it and it's curving around the ship. And I, I just, I wonder like, to you as the, the like lead designer of this game, uh-oh. I'm sorry. Good catch. That's the, the thing with dealing with physics. Now, Benjamin's much heavier than him, so he's just basically <laughs> being pulled off. You got um, dragged and away. And that's the kind of thing, I mean, early playtests, we, we had uh, people being like, oh, is there any way we can stop like the engine from rolling away when I've just built it? And you're there going, yeah, don't build it on a hill. You know, it's <laughs> like suddenly this whole sort of dynamic comes into play where you've got to um, you know, think about how you're sort of physically going to build this stuff. I mean, the thing that's most impressive to me about this game, I think, is the the way that like it it really follows its own rules and like the the physics of this world are very uh, honest and it it very like it almost never cheats in favor of the player or in flavor in favor of of the world. It's it's like this very consistent rule set. Like, I wonder like what is the the motivation? I guess. Uh, for you to, to, to build a game in this way. I, I guess, do you think the players feel a greater sense of ownership over a ship where they've hand-placed every slab of metal or... Yeah, I think it's, I mean, because approaching, like, sort of, you know, with, with other kind of survival games and stuff, um, they kind of, you know, they, they want you to build a base and then they also, like, kind of talk about explore, exploring and stuff. Um, well, what will happen is, is that you build your base and then you really don't want to go too far because you've kind of invested everything into that. Mm -hmm. So we kind of approached it like, what if your ship was your base and you take it with you? Um, you know, and then, and then you're like, everywhere you go where you take that, you kind of all build onto it, all the stuff you find. We have this persistency as well, like everything that you do. So all those trees we were cutting down on that last island, those will stay there for theoretically years. Mm -hmm. um, and any player that comes along will actually then see um, the results of that, like someone's been deforested, like this little camp we're building that we're building the ship in, these panels that are on the floor, that'll stay there forever. And so any player that comes along, you're basically every interaction you do in this game leaves a story. So every island will have uh, like the marks of other players that have come by before. Um, and that can involve any sort of like ship battles and all that sort of stuff. So for example, we could have, we've just landed on this island, we built a little camp and we've docked the ship up because we needed to make repairs or something like that. Um, you could explore the island and let's say that like I hadn't just built this engine and we'd actually just found it. You know, we can go up to where we don't have any sort of the, the scanning stuff. We could scan it and go, hey, this engine is pretty good. Now, how the hell do we get it back sort of up there? We could maybe sort of both sort of combine our ropes and sort of slowly maybe sort of pull it up. But the hill's going to get steeper and it's just going to drag us back. 
Um, so when we're talking about the like the hang glider as equipment, mm -hmm. the same technology that basically lifts up ships, you know, that, that core in there, you can actually get uh, this technology to build little mini versions of those uh, using the material that you find. And actually when you attach that to objects, you reduce the weight of them. So we just have this sort of weightlessness technology and that can be applied to any item in the game. And so now we're essentially like sort of recovering the engine for ourselves. <laughs> Um, and this could be, we could attach these little objects to trees, to rocks, and stuff like that. And then you can use them as, you know, like physics objects. I mean, because the ship's going to carry a certain amount of weight, if we'd have dropped this ship on a, from above onto someone else's ship, it could weigh them down because, like, you know, say they've hit their weight limit and suddenly they've now got this, you know, extra load of weight. So you could essentially take someone's ship out by just overloading them yeah, using you were, physics. You were telling me earlier that, that uh, in playtesting, one group of players actually devised a, a method of attack that just involved, like, dismounting and dropping physical objects off of their ship onto enemy players. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and that, that's, like, a, that's a viable thing. So there we've essentially, we, we could have found that random engine. So because of the persistence over time, um, your, your kind of ship then starts to sort of build up this like little ragtag parts of stuff you've sort of just scavenged among sort of around the place and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean um, I think one really unique thing about this game is like it's video games in general don't seem to value persistence all that much. I feel like it for for 99% of sort of action and adventure games in the world like bullet holes fade away after a few seconds corpses fade away immediately and the few yeah. games where things do stay persistent like for example bethesda games like skyrim right like objects in the world will generally stay where you left them but you're alone in that universe and this is yeah. one of the, the first real instances i've seen of a game that combines both of those in a, in a way that seems to really prioritize that persistence uh, one of the one of my favorite examples of of that system in this game is the uh, camera stuff that, that you were telling me about before? Yeah, Can you kind of yeah. elaborate on that for the audience? Sure, I'll, uh, I'll bring it in. Um, so, if I actually just... So this is like... The one method that we have of uh, kind of like leveling up, I guess, in progression is you're able to gain sort of knowledge. So the one thing we have uh, in the game is we build in like this ancient... sort of The ancient civilizations, basically, that all this technology you're kind of attempting to use is all based off of. Um, and so... That's all we have. Like this writer who's been months just writing this huge backstory, and and there'll be ruins and all sorts of stuff. And you'll basically go around, you'll be a scan and find out about like what they did and how the world basically came to be what it is. Um, and sort of that's what we set in the past. And then everything else we have because of the persistence is basically it's, it's what the players then do to the world. You know, mm -hmm. and that becomes the like present day history. So actually, the first few players who join the game. Um, there won't be any history like outside of what we've built. There'll be no player history there until they kind of until they start playing the game, which is a little bit weird. But it's it's not sort of I guess situation to be in. So yeah, with the um, so the main way of progression is through sort of finding these ruins and, and old technology. You kind of scan it for like this sort of knowledge that you can use to generate new schematics, so new engines, uh, new parts, new equipment. Um, so you can use that knowledge then to to generate that. And one of the ways you do it is you can craft a camera. Um, because we want you to kind of almost be, you don't go to islands and start killing stuff necessarily, you go to islands and you start sort of unraveling the world and finding out about how, what it's like now, um, to the point where, for example, the map, you, you as players, you draw yourself. Um, and so what I can do here is I can you know, take a picture and, and we have kind of fun with it, as well as it being a progression thing. Like, when we have the wildlife in the world, we want it to, like, sort of tap into what hasn't been done for a while, just like Pokemon Snap. Because we have an ecosystem of these creatures who will be fighting, they'll be feeding, they'll be breeding, they'll be doing all this stuff, and they'll, they'll be ticking over, like, you know, in distant islands. You know, that island over there could have, like, just the insects will be your creatures, whatever, will just be doing their stuff. They'll be going around, they'll be in, they'll be fighting among themselves. And the players kind of come in, they, they interact with that. But if you kind of capture them, like, maybe it's their fighting, and you snap a picture of it, you essentially, like, get extra knowledge for that because you sort of captured them at, like, a, a moment, I guess, um, in sort of, like, their thing. And so we like the idea that you would land on an island and suddenly you're going around and finding all these ruins and, and, and scanning them. And then, um, you know, it's like you kind of can exhaust, I guess, an island of... Um, sort of knowledge and then you kind of move on to the next one. Um, but what I'm talking about, like the sort of having fun with the camera thing, I'm just building basically a picture frame now. 
And we want kind of part of that to be like, again, with the whole player story thing. Now, this is a very small ship. It's not got multiple levels, but we have other ones that have sort of multiple floors. So I can just put a picture frame up there. Mm -hmm. And I can go through my photo book and sort of pick some of the objects, uh, some pictures that I've basically taken. So I can just choose that one. And then suddenly I've got there like this picture now. And that'll be there for everyone to see. Um, if this ship ever crashes on an island, uh, or it's ever lost, whatever sort of gets abandoned or anything like that, if you come across it as a player, you, you can walk through and you'll have the, you know, as so you see here, we've got our little respawns, which is what we uh, appear on if we die. So this is like how the ship is ours. It's got our two names on it. So if you arrive on this ship and you, you find it, you're going to see like the names of the crew and you'll see little photos of like their adventures or what they've done. And you'll have this weird thing of like, it's not placed there by us. That's what kind of players, I guess, what like sort of have done or, or left their mark on the world. And you, you as a sort of as a new person arriving in this place will just kind of sift through it all and, and find out what, you know, what maybe they were up to or how long ago it was. It could have been six weeks ago. It could have been six months ago. You don't really, you don't really know. Um, and that's kind of the exciting thing for us, really. Um, so is your hope that the that players will kind of like lean into that, that they'll assemble crews and take group photos of them together and, and kind of uh, th like encourage that, that history so that future future players I mean, will, will find it? There's, there's stuff there to encourage it, for sure, but the way that it's also part of the progression as well means you'll be doing it anyway. And also, um, even the smallest interaction you do in this world will, will leave that mark. Like, mm -hmm. just cutting a branch off a tree, you've suddenly, inadvertently, um, sort of left your mark there. And so just as you go through, players are naturally just, you know, they're just changing the world, like whether they kind of like it or not, I suppose. And right. it will just remember what, what it's done. You've also, because um, uh, I think one, one question people might have is, is uh, like, how do you ensure that the world isn't too big to ever encounter anyone's ruins or too small? So because of the, it's the nature of it being floating islands, we can actually um, just sort of stitch on uh, extra regions of the world. Um, and then that basically just expands the world. So we always have the density that we want. Um, there's no starting zones in the game. Um, there is the there's like higher air areas, I guess, which are mm. kind of like biomes, so like deserts and ice and tropics and stuff like that. And they're basically they're sort of walled off behind these huge storms. Um, and so, so what you're doing is you're building up your ship to get into those areas to find more sort of like you know other sort of technology and, and sort of higher end sort of I guess stuff. It's not you can't really say high level because there isn't levels in the game. You know, right. the, the the barriers for getting through these storms is not you need to be X level. It's has your ship got enough power? Is it heavy enough to not right. get overturned by the wind? Because the physics goes for everything. Um, so there are no there's no experience meters, no leveling. It's no, purely no, based on physics, right? Yeah. Um, so when you so somebody you see here like herbs just firing cannons the when you harvesting metals, you're going to find lead and platinum and all that. The damage that that cannon does is based on the weight of the metal you made it out of, because it's going to weigh X amount of kilograms, so therefore it's going to hit that hard. The same thing for all the player damage. It's the same damage that means why you got killed when a tree fell on you, because it weighed X and it was traveling at that speed when it hit you. Um, it's, it sounds a lot like the worlds that like the rules that determine. Uh, whether or not something will kill you in real life, <laughs> like, yeah, the weight of it and yeah. the speed it's, it's going, you know, it's uh, it's it's physics. And I said like with the freeform nature of it. So if there was another ship like out here and we you know, we were hunting the skies and stuff, getting on like boarding that ship is not a, you know, it's not a case of hold B to dock and stuff. It's right. you know attach with your rope. You know this is all still applies. There's there's no sort of you know I can still do all my somersaulting I was doing, but now it's on a moving Jeez. ship. Jeez, um, this is oh, harrowing. Oh, knocked myself out a little bit so it's either you you're free to run around um the ship's kind of you know it's we're traveling through the skies and you can just chill sit down um sort of and sort of go off and pick a destination and so go cool. and that's what we wanted that freeform nature of it um, i can just take a picture of herb as he's flying his ship you know it's a little just snap it's a snap a moment you yeah. know it's our first ship so we want to remember it you know that's the tools are there and we just kind of let you play with them um have you found that uh in play testing our player uh oh it's starting, oh, it's to, starting to tilt. Up. Luckily, you can just <laughs> grapple. Uh, do you find that players, when they encounter other players, do they tend to immediately be hostile towards them? Do they tend to cooperate? Like, it's it's quite hard to say because we 
we're, it's, we're not at that sort of stage where we can have these sort of big play tests. So we do right. have those ones coming up. I know there's the, the big issue of griefing, um, but just to the nature of the layout of our world, as a starting player, I mean, a lot of these kind of games you do get, so someone just jumps in with, they're, they're naked and they can just grief you. Um, <laughs> whereas here, if you don't have a ship, then they're just on that island. Um, they can't really touch you. Um, so they have to build a ship, and one, that ship has to be fast enough to catch up with you. They then have to be strong enough to kind of take you out, I suppose. And mm -hmm. at that point, the, the griefer basically has something to lose. Um, and so then suddenly, as you, if you, encounter, you find if you encounter like ships, you're they're very sort of hesitant because you're like, I've got everything on this because this is my like base. And right. they've got everything from their journey on theirs. And so there's very much, players tend to just avoid each other. Um, which is fine by us, we don't want it to be, um, while we say MMO, well, we don't want players to just be, you know, sort of all grouping up and, and you know, and, and hanging out and all that kind of stuff. In, in that way, you, you can sort of team up with friends and stuff, but, you know, we, we don't, it's not like we actively discourage it, but the mechanics tend to sort of lead people not really, as soon as you start getting, like, you know, a few ships, someone's going to, like, you know, decide that actually they want to they want to try their luck and just sort of take someone out. That's it. And you also you mentioned to me once before I think that like the way the the grappling is kind of uh, balanced, it's balanced in favor of allowing a, a solitary player to escape a dangerous situation, right? Yeah, I mean you you'd, you'd have a hard time kind of if you know you, you might have seen earlier in, in in the video with with Herb kind of uh, grappling around. Um, it's not particularly easy to catch someone when they're they're roping about mm -hmm. um, and so yeah I mean it's like with with bigger ships as well you can kind of just like sneak aboard and I'll show like so if I uh, let me just just keep it going and turning so say we got that little salvage things and this is the same thing that we do in the salvage woods you can also do it to any equipment in the game so or any sort of ship part so I'll just be like salvaging this um, and this could be you know you could drop it onto the island because you want to basically steal it so you could be sneaking aboard this ship and then you've detached it and now slowly <laughs> power down and sort of land on the island. And there you go, that's, that's there for someone to see, um, to find at some point in the future. Maybe I'll need to go and recover it. What happens we have to, to, uh, to items that fall like into the sky? Uh, if they fall into the sky, that's it, they're gone. Mm -hmm. They're lost from the world. Um, you can see Herb spawned another ship there. And you'll see now that the ship's actually listing slightly to the left <laughs> right. um, because it's only got one engine now. And so that kind of physics model still applies to your ship. Now, if I was to like sort of ninja steal that engine, because that engine just rolled off and could have been lost in the sky or whatever. Yeah. I can preemptively attach these little things that I was using before. Um, and I can start summoning, because one of the key things we want to do is let players, like, oh, I just, I think I destroyed that. There we go. <laughs> um, is let players kind of just use the mechanics and tools we put into the game in like unusual ways. Um, so yeah, while I could have harvested it and like hope that it falls somewhere sort of useful, I can actually just pre-attach those. Now it's weightless. Now you can grapple it, right? Got no engine. Now I can grapple it, and uh, basically, oh, hang on, it's uh, <laughs> it's now way up in the sky. <laughs> but now that kind of thing is like weightless, and and I can basically pull that down, and uh, essentially like take take it with me, and that's now just going to sit there floating in the sky. So you could be a player and just notice that up in the sky and be like, oh. It's just a random floating engine, and just actually go up there and recover it. Well, now that uh, now that Herb's spawned his own ship, could we take a <laughs> quick look? I guess at the what the ship to ship combat looks like, because that to me that was the moment that this game clicked was seeing what happens to a ship as it gets kind of destroyed. Um, yeah, I mean, I think at the moment, honestly, um, our cannonball is slightly broken, so I don't know how <laughs> sort of thing that could look. What we can do, we can show you some cool shit with the. Uh, and again, I talked about like having those mechanics in game, and then just letting players kind of work stuff out with them. Right, right. And this is something that we found as we were playing, you know, because we we find this kind of crazy stuff happen as well. So when we first put the cannons in. Now your rope can attach to anything, and um, and cannonballs are physical objects. So we thought, what would happen if I was, you know, going to basically attach my rope to a cannonball as it fired out? Is um, that possible? Yeah. If you're good enough, or if you're quick <laughs> enough. So if, if I just ended up into the... So now oh we've basically made like a makeshift catapult, essentially. That's just amazing. Just out of just the systems in the game. So he's just thrown me far, far further than I would have got um, otherwise. Um, and then, yeah, they are just physical objects in the thing. So, you know, they bounce on the terrain and 
do their damage and stuff, or I could jump up and... Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> but yeah, they just it's I said like that's just a system in the game, and, and you can sort of use that how you want. Um, are, you, are you excited, at, like as a team, to kind of see what kind of stuff players discover and 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 the ways they interact with this physics-driven world in ways you might not have expected? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, as I said it's 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 just one huge sort of. Uh, it's kind of crazy to to, to have this huge network sort of physics world. It's you know. Some of the next step from from Surge Simulator and Iron Bread, I suppose, we just kind of took it to the extreme um, <laughs> and went super ambitious, I guess. Um, but it's you know, it's like you know, I, I played, I loved sort of Wind Waker and Skies of Arcadia when I was a kid, and this is more or less just um, making that, <laughs> but for lots of players in one single world. But I'll show you the extent of the sort of physics. I'm going to spawn in like a much bigger ship. Now. Okay. And again, like in the future, you'll be molding the kind of the decks yourself. But this is a the like a multi-deck ship that we've got, um, sort of in the game. And you can see this one's got this, uh, well, it's like diegetic UI. So um, these are just little sort of they're in-world little things, but like the speed and how much fuel and your your heading and all that kind of stuff. And those can be attached anywhere in the ship. Again, it's the the, the idea that we have these sort of features or mechanics in the game and you can just sort of do with them what you want. So if I was, I say I'm below deck now, but if I want to know what the height of the ship is, I can actually just, just craft one of those things that I put up there and I, I put them there just so the pilot could kind of, as he's flying, he gets all that right, right. information. Um, but you might downstage, you might have like little captain's quarters or something like that. Um, and you can just grab this altimeter and just, you know, I'm just going to stick it onto the wall here. And there we go. Now I can see what the altitude is like when I'm down here. That might be useful, say, if you've got so we've got these like cannons below deck, and you might want the you know the people um, on the cannons to be aware of like how heavy the ship is and hmm. how much it's carrying and stuff like that. You know that might be useful information. So you could just you know while they're down here, sort of shooting at people and stuff to to know that. Now I um, think I know the answer to this question already, but yeah, uh, in terms of I guess what you would call another game's friendly fire, like could you theoretically damage your own ship with a cannon that's attached to it? Yeah, of course. I mean, like here we've kind of, um, you know, maybe uh, sort of not taken care when building and just sort of camped <laughs> in our, our cannons. But you know, that could be uh, like a, still a viable kind of tactic because you know people might be looking at this and thinking, oh, this ship's not even armed. But then you can shoot um, away at these panels and just surprise the <laughs> and then be like, surprise cannon, bye, and then just you know start start going at it really. Um, and, you know, we've seen people kind of try that trickery stuff sort of before <laughs> with um, pretending like a ship's abandoned, like hitting below deck and then people have boarded it going like, oh, yeah, no, there's, there's something there's anyone here. And of course, everyone's waiting below deck and they've just, uh, you know, jumped out and, and started attacking someone. Um, but what's kind of cool here, I can just show off the um, network physics. Now, this is not something that would happen in the game. And this is what we talk about with the, the, the persistence thing um, and sort of how you do it. Yeah. Okay, and so well, Herb's gonna do it for us. But basically, you can delete the the whole spine of the ship, and then every single part on that ship will become a physics object, and every part of it will be um, networked across any amount of players. So if you just uh, so delete that there, it will just, just explode, Jeez. Um, and that'll all rain down on the environment, all down the island. Obviously, we lost a huge chunk of the ship. Sure, yeah. And that stuff will all just roll down. Um, and basically be lost to the abyss. Um, but what's left, you can basically, so as a player, and I said, when we talk about that persistence, all those panels maintain what they were when they were attached to the ship. So they're curved because they were just bending around a particular part of the ship. Um, oh, let's look out, some crates just, just going down there. Away. Now I just have, you know, I'll have sort of items in that are now lost. Um, so as a player, you might arrive and you see them, and you're like, what the hell happened here, you know? You can see the, the fuel tank, you can see the all the parts are like still like sort of I said like like they were when they were attached to the ship. Um, sort of any damage done to them is sort of maintained. You got these are little instruments here, and I said they they still actually work. So the artificial horizon, because it's on a slope, you right. notice it's it's still tilted slightly, and now it's obviously on its back, so it's sort of pointing into the sky. Um, you know these just work in the world. So you can see now it's still trying to do its job, but it's not attached to the ship anymore. It's just sort of on fat, all lonely on an island. 
and you'll be able to pick for all this stuff and then decide like you know hey i want i want this this panel this this panel's great i'm just going to attach like a, a thing to it and they actually they now, retain now their shape a little bit yep oh no entirely so this is what it, this is what this panel was when it was attached to the ship um i've attached lifted to it so off it goes <laughs> the magic carpet um yeah so you might just find like you know as the world goes on just bits floating in the sky because someone's just lost it or tried to steal it and it's just floating there so that um, could in theory that could travel through the air for a week and then end up on another island with another yeah, player yeah essentially um if i give myself uh so you can just like ping off of stuff like that actually i mean i'm actually firing um i don't think that's actually strong enough to move oh there it goes so you just shoved the panel slightly uh, if that was hit with a cannonball, you'd probably notice it would just go flying off, um, off into the abyss, essentially. Um, but as I said, when this all collapsed, and you saw the way it sort of rained down, and stuff fell, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is all just networked. So if, if Herb was to come down here, like he's not seeing any of these parts out of alignment or anything like that. That's all. They're all entirely networked. Um, so that's kind of like the extent of sort of what we're, I guess, what we're trying to do. It's incredible. I can just shove that panel off and <laughs> I didn't like it. There's almost like an element of uh, like butterfly effect stuff here where like the, the tiniest shove or the tiniest action cutting off the branch of a tree and having it tumble away like could drastically affect another player's experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a bit crazy, yeah, I mean, we've had like, because we haven't got them in yet, but like the idea that for example, when, when we give the ships like harpoons, which kind of just the same sort of technology we use for the grappling hooks, but now you kind of combine that with a lifter and a, a tree log, and then you drag the tree logs behind you, and then you detach them when you want to like create like almost like a pendulum, I guess. Like so, this tree log suddenly is kind of come sort of swing below this ship and just slamming into someone else's and could do like a serious amount of damage. Um, and that's just like a one sort of way you've invented your own weapon, I guess, just using physics. Um, and that's. Uh, that's kind of what's exciting to us, I think. It's seeing, oh, there it goes. You just see him just shoot the panel. It's gone flying <laughs> it around. So, yeah, away. yeah, and, and this, this stuff, you know, this is just, we're on one island. There's thousands of them, and all the players could be getting up to all sorts of stuff all over the place. So, we, we want, I said, like, just on this one island alone, like, all the crap we've been doing is all remembered and will be here. So, in six weeks' time, you could come and by and be like, what the hell was going on here? Like, there's like, there's a ship just up there, there's a floating engine, there's ruins all over here, there's right. a floating panel, and there's a camp over there with like a half built thing. Um, and it's, yeah, and it will just all remain there. And then, like, you, you leave the island for the next one, and you don't know what you're going to see there. You don't know what stories has happened on that island. Um, um, this is just a little one that we've done in the last sort of 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> Uh, something that, that really interests me too about this game is I, I think you could kind of classify generally most of Bossa Studio's output up until this point as like what I would call comedy games or games mm. that are uh, built around like being kind of silly and making the player laugh like I Am Bread or, or a Surgeon Simulator. Uh, and this game I think is kind of tonally a departure. Like there, there are things that are funny and fun about it, but it's, yeah. it's a bit more... Uh, I don't know. I mean, how how have you guys approached making a game with a bit more? I don't want to call it a serious tone, but I guess comparatively, it's serious. Like when you put it up against what you've done in I the mean, past. We've we've never really gone into the games going like this is we're going to make it deliberately hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 start with the kind of mechanics first, then we just sort of mess with them, um, and this is just like an extension of that. And I think, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this game definitely evolved. To be what it is now. It, I mean, it probably it started off much much simpler. We had like a really fun grappling hook, and, and we liked the idea that you could build an airship. And as I said, like it kind of just stemmed from me being a big fan of Skies of Arcadia and stuff. And and in Wind Waker, when you could look across the horizon and, and see an island and know you could go there. Yeah. And I was kind of just combined the two. And then sort of then we threw in the, all the physics and stuff that we've learned from our other games. And then, then we had the, these improbable guys come along with this sort of crazy technology. Right. And we sort of, it all just sort of, yeah, escalated into what we've got here, really. That sounds like a very uh, organic... So it's a very, it's a very organic uh, evolution. It wasn't, oh, we're going to, it's going to be a more serious game. It's going to be, it's kind of it all just came about like that. You know, we just, we just, we make what we want to make. And if it happens to be more serious than the last one, it's not, a, it's not necessarily a conscious decision. Yeah. 
it's just like, hey, this is what we're excited about at the moment, and that's what we're going to make. That's awesome. And this game, you said, began then with the grappling mechanic? Is that the first thing that you had that, that led to the Yeah, I mean, like, from, from the earlier stage, we just, we had this fun, sort of, we had fun being, you know, because there's not been particularly good Spider-Man games in a while. <laughs> so, yeah. And and we found that was, you know, we were having fun with just that, and then, you know, we threw in other players, and we were just sort of vaulting around the world, and we were like, yeah, like, there's that core there. For us, it was always having that core, like, with Iron Bread, it's the floppy bread. And then we did the rest of it. Surgeon was the hand. You, know, you ate the hand and you're like, this is fun. Like, this is unusual. We want to, like, we can do something with this. And, and World of Drift, was, yeah, like, it was when we had, we were just swinging around this sort of very weird abstract obstacle course. And we were just like, this is fun. Like, <laughs> you know? That's awesome. And so, uh, do you have any plans that you've announced for, like, when this might be available or whether you're going to go the early access route or what, what you plan on doing with World of Drift? I mean, we have sort of alphas and stuff we want to sort of get through, and we have like the sort of sign-ups on our website and stuff for, for any someone who's interested What's in What's the just URL sort of, for that? Like, it's just worldsadrift.com. Cool. Um, and yeah, we have we have the forums. I haven't got people sort of suggesting some pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> we'll see how, how far we get through it. Uh, but yeah, no, we want to kind of, we're, we're planning sort of release, like, not for another year or so. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully with some sort of betas and alphas in between that. Um, to really sort of put the technology for its paces, I guess. Um, cool. But uh, is early access a thing that you're you're considering, or do you want it well, to be because like... It's, uh, because it's been a continuously developed game anyway, mm -hmm. I don't really feel like the need to label it as early access. We'll just have a version of the game and we'll let players go in, and then we're just always going to be adding to it. Right. We want to get to the point where, as I said, like when we first added in those the ability to lift stuff and make it weightless, you have suddenly all these sort of gameplay opportunities opened up so you want to get this like core base of the game and then be like sweet now we're adding in like little attachable rockets or something like that you know something that people can then start playing with with the physics um and expanding the game in that way and and then yeah so as a player you don't you're not leveling up you're cool i found this awesome new equipment like right. i wonder in which ways i can exploit or use this to you know find even more cool stuff so well, basically what i'm going to do now is just kind of with the way we kind of build this sort of world, I guess, is kind of showing off our cool draw distance. And because the the way we do our sort of, I guess, physics networky stuff, mm -hmm. we can actually sort of get to some pretty insane sort of distances. Um, <laughs> you can see like all the parts, you can see all the instruments, they're just lying there. And then you can kind of, you know, the, the distances at which you can kind of see that stuff kind of gets a bit crazy. Um, you oh. can see the engine floating out over there. You can see the camp and all the stuff that we were building in the distance. So there's this nice element of sort of being able to spy, I guess, um, which is always kind of, you know, the fact you could just be looking from afar and just sort of spying on people. And, right. And nothing's them. nothing's popping in. It seems like yet another way in which this game is is uh, very honest with the physics and like yeah, doesn't yeah. really cheat much, if that makes sense. Well, it's because everything because of the server technology we're using, it's there. It doesn't have to like. Uh, all, all we're doing on the like, I guess the game client is visualizing what the server sees. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to be like, oh, we need to remember where the position of this thing is and, and make sure the player sees it all at the same time. It's like, no, the server's doing that. I think Herb, yeah, you can see Herb there. Um, you can see him jumping. So this is a kind of just a, an example of like our sort of, I guess, like draw distance. Um, yeah. See the little instruments. He's there gonna. He's just pulling something. So the physics is still working, even at this sort of distance, um, because it's all on the server. Um, as you can see, he's just shoved off the uh, helm, <laughs> and you'll see it just tumble off the island. Wow! Yeah. And the physics are all behavior. Like, I feel and like you can, can and you can see how far out I am, um, and it's like, still all still all happening. You can still see he's the still ship up it. in the sky too, and everything. Like in most games, I think this is where it would start using a bit of fakery. Like there would be some sort of yeah. pop in, or the objects would disappear beyond a certain distance. But because it's all server side, yeah. you're saying that this stuff can remain. Uh, it's all tracked, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you can see the, the camp in the far distance where we were building the ship earlier. You can see where I left the engine floating. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you can see her attempting to fire at me. But even, you know, just you know, the, the panels are curved. There's that panel that was floating earlier. Right, right. Sort of sat there. Um, I said, yeah, the, the, the physics is, is still happening. Even like a slight wobble on the plate, you know, as it sort of lands, it's, you know, as it sort of slides off behind, it's, it's still there. There's no fakery going on there. It's... You know, it's just there's that that's the kind of physics. I see he's trying to pull that wing there, but he's not going to manage that. <laughs> it's, it's unreal. 
a little bit too heavy. But yeah, you can see, you can just, I guess, you know, this, this distance allows us to sort of, you know, almost like spying on players from a distance. Um, and we like the idea that you could essentially snap a photo, um, sort of then go over and just like sort of place that picture like on the on the ground, and that person would be like, "Why is there a picture of me?" Let them know <laughs> like, that they're being like, watched. Yeah, just sort of some weird voyeur is just spying on someone <laughs> and then leaving the photos for them to find. That's so cool. Uh, um, but yeah, we just we just have fun with all these little mechanics, really. Yeah, it seems like it all ties together uh, quite elegantly, and it's it, like it's, even looking at this draw distance stuff, it seems like just yet another way that this game's has a rule set that behaves in a very consistent and reliable and honest yeah, manner. Yeah, I mean, that was always the way. I mean, like like surgeon, it's like if I pick up the the drill and sort of you know do this, you, there's a there's that we we like the idea. There's a because of the internal logic, you don't have to try and like tutorialize or explain a lot of stuff because as soon as the players kind of get it. They're like, oh, well, no, that's how it would work. And then if it behaves that way, suddenly that's, I think that's like what was their kind of appeal is that you could kind of just make up what you wanted to do and it, the game kind of reacted in the way you were expecting. Mm -hmm. You kind of just match their expectation all the time. And that's kind of, that's what I think is sort of like an important thing to try and sort of strive for. That's awesome. Well, Luke, thank you so much for, for giving us a look at the game. Um, this, this looks really rad and uh, I'm excited for myself and for players to, I guess, I guess get their hands on it uh, sometime in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.